Welcome back to the Dirty Medicine, Dirty Biochemistry series. In the next few videos, I'm going to be teaching you what I believe is the most challenging topic in all of biochemistry. I'm speaking, of course, about lipid transport. Now, if you've cracked open a review textbook, or maybe you've you know, meandered through different question banks, you've probably seen a bunch of terms that you know mentally are all connected to lipid transport. because you weren't sleeping for that long in the first two years of medical school when they tried to teach you biochemistry. And your brain knows that all of these terms have something to do with fat, right? They have something to do with lipids. You know that they're important for the biochemistry of lipid transport. But unfortunately, if you take a look at the review resources out there, there's really nothing, in my humble opinion, that teaches you what you need to know about lipid transport in terms of both the biochemistry, but also the high yields. What I'm saying is that there are some resources that oversimplify this topic, and they just throw a diagram on a piece of paper and expect you to get questions right on test day. There are other resources that are hundreds of pages long, and these are usually your biochemistry textbooks, which break down this pathway for you, but they do so in such an overly detailed manner that you get lost in those details and can't keep in mind the high yield what do I need to know for test day ideas? So my goal with this, with this video and the next few videos is to first teach you the biochemistry, but to do so with the perfect balance of detail and big picture in mind. It's really, really easy to get lost in lipid transport if you're oversimplifying and not putting in enough detail, but it's also easy to get overwhelmed and have a panic attack if you're doing this with the lens of a biochemist. So Dirty Medicine has got you covered. I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know about lipid transport, and I'm going to do so efficiently so that when we're done, you will absolutely know the pathway, but you're not going to get lost in the details. And the reason that that approach is important is because when I'm done teaching you this pathway, you'll be able to connect the biochemistry that you should have learned in the first two years of medical school. You'll be able to connect that to the high yield concepts that they're going to ask you on USMLE and Comlex. In other words, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know and absolutely nothing more. So let's get started with lipid transport. Now look at this list of terms, triglycerides, micelles, chylomicrons, LDL, HDL, VLDL, IDL, LPL, HSL. I mean, have you had enough L's yet? lipase, lecithin cholesterol acyltransferase, apolipoprotein A1, B48, B100, C2, and E. What language am I speaking right now, guys? I mean, seriously, this is confusing stuff. And if you're looking at this list, and you're probably like most medical students in the world, you're saying to yourself, oh my god, I don't know what each of these things do. How the hell am I going to get these questions right on test day? In other words, you're like our girl Princess Leia. Help me, dirty medicine. You're my only hope. Well, don't worry, guys. Today, I'm going to simplify this exhaustive list of terms, teach you some high-yield biochemical pathways as it relates to lipids, and wrap all of that up for your studying pleasure and tell you what you need to know to get the questions right on test day. So this is part one of lipid transport. And because this topic is so complex and so detailed, I need to break it up into multiple videos as to not overwhelm you. If I put all this stuff into one video, you'll go home crying, and that's not my goal. I want you to score the highest possible score on your USMLE and Comlex. So this is part one. And in this video, we're going to be discussing everything that happens from the moment that a dietary fat enters the system up until the point that a chylomicron is formed. Everything in between of what I just said is going to be what we talk about in this video's biochemical pathway. So let's get started with where the system starts, right? Dietary fats. So from the moment that you take that bite of a cheeseburger or you take a bite of your Ezekiel organic bread avocado toast, if you're one of those type of people, the moment the dietary fat enters your system, it immediately starts being packaged and broken down. The first thing that acts on it is salivary lipase. So you probably know that there's lipase that's secreted by the pancreas and lipase breaks down fat. Remember that the suffix ACE, A-S-E, means to break something down. So lipase breaks down lipids, right? It ACEs lipids. So it breaks down lipids. 
Now, lipase is obviously secreted by the pancreas. This is something that's high yield and that you learn when you're doing GI. But there's also lipase in the saliva. Now, the lipase in the saliva is certainly not as potent. It's not as strong, but it still breaks down fats nonetheless. So as soon as you take a bite of something that has dietary fats, the saliva is already trying to prepackage those dietary fats into the necessary breakdown products for ultimate packaging and transportation. So dietary fat gets broken down initially to some extent by salivary lipase. And when that happens, it's broken into free fatty acids, monoglycerides, and cholesterol. Additionally, there could be other products in here such as fat-soluble vitamins, etc. But this is what you should keep in mind. Now, once we have these components, obviously you're swallowing and the food bolus will go down your esophagus, go through your stomach and into the small intestine. Now, in the small intestine, these compounds and these components are going to be packaged into little globules. So the image that you're seeing here is basically like a cross-sectional area of the intestinal lumen. So we're still in the small intestine. These components are packaged into fat globules, and this is important. Now let's take a step back for a second. One of the big themes that you're going to see in this part one of lipid transport is that in order to move dietary fats and their subsequent breakdown lipid products throughout the digestive system, we need to optimize surface area so that as we go, different enzymes can act accordingly. This is the first example of that. In the intestinal lumen, these components, right, free fatty acids, monoglycerides, cholesterol, fat-soluble vitamins, they're going to be packaged into fat globules, right? So it's all about efficient surface area. Big theme in today's video. Now, once you have your fat globules, you're going to pass by the liver. Now, the liver has a duct that goes straight to the small intestine. You should know this anatomy from having been in the first two years of medical school. Now, what's the liver's role here? Well, the liver is going to secrete something called bile salts. And once the bile salts are secreted, they're going to act on the fat globules, as you see here. So bile salts get released from the liver. They come to the intestinal lumen through the duct, leaving the liver, and they act on the fat globules. Now, when they act on the fat globules, they're going to further break them down into more optimized surface area. Again, this is all about efficiency. You can't process the fat globules like you can smaller lipid products. So the bile salts act on the fat globules and convert them into surface optimized fat droplets. So these are still droplets. They're just smaller and more optimized for further breakdown. So now that we have this optimized fat droplet with an adequate surface area to be processed, this is where pancreatic lipase comes in. So earlier we talked about salivary lipase, but now the pancreas comes by and he's got his boxing gloves on, right? The pancreas is ready to smash these fat droplets and break them down using pancreatic lipase. So pancreatic lipase gets secreted from the pancreas and acts on these fat globules. Now these fat droplets are surface optimized for the pancreatic lipase. So look at this necessary step. First, the bile salts had to take the globules and break them down into surface optimized droplets. If that never happened, then the pancreatic lipase really wouldn't be as effective breaking down these fat droplets. And we would have problems processing dietary fats. So the pancreas takes a punch, goes for a little uppercut, and knocks out these fat droplets with pancreatic lipase. Now when that happens, these fat droplets get converted, of course, into free fatty acids, monoglycerides, and cholesterol. Now I know what you're thinking. We already had this. We started with free fatty acids, monoglycerides, and cholesterol right after we took our first swallow. And you're correct, right? You're absolutely correct. But what I'm illustrating here is that lipase breaks down the fat droplets into their key lipid components. But salivary lipase couldn't do that fully when you first were biting and swallowing your food, right? Those components went to the intestine for further processing because you needed a stronger lipase, which comes out of the pancreas with its boxing gloves on, to really smash those fat droplets into the full array of free fatty acids, monoglycerides, and cholesterol. So if we take a big step back, there's a few big themes I need to point out. First, we already talked about optimizing surface area for lipid transport. That's the big first idea. The second idea is that lipase is from both the saliva and the pancreas, but the one in the pancreas is so much stronger than the one in the saliva. And think about this. When pancreatic lipase 
accidentally gets on the pancreas, right? It does auto digestion. And that's how you get pancreatitis. Imagine if you had that much of a potent lipase in your mouth. It would completely digest things in your mouth and you'd have like tongue-itis and lips-itis, whatever. I mean, I'm, I know that sounds stupid, but it's the truth. So pancreatic lipase is so much stronger than salivary lipase. Now, you have your free fatty acids, your monoglycerides, and your cholesterol. And the next step, after we've broken down these fat droplets using pancreatic lipase, is to have these free fatty acids, monoglycerides, and cholesterol combine into a micelle. Now, a micelle is really just molecules in a colloidal solution, and there's really not much more to know about it. But just recognize that in this pathway, your key lipid components will package themselves into micelles. Now, at this point, you've got your micelle sitting there, and it's finally time for the micelle to enter the enterocyte, right? The functional cell of the intestinal wall. So the micelle enters the enterocyte, but technically what it's doing is not entering as much as it is releasing fatty acids and monoglycerides into the enterocyte. So these little orange lines represent fatty acids and monoglycerides. And the micelle is literally just dumping them into the enterocyte. They'll diffuse through the enterocyte wall, and now they are finally in the inside of the small intestine. So they've been absorbed. Now at this point, these free fatty acids and monoglycerides are going to assemble. They're smart. They know what they're doing. They've made it all the way down into the enterocyte of the liver, despite having to face the salivary lipase in the mouth, the bile salts released by the liver, and the pancreatic lipase released from the pancreas. So these guys know what they're doing. The free fatty acids and monoglycerides are going to assemble into triglycerides. So I've organized them there in sets of three to represent triglyceride assembly. Now we've got triglycerides assembled beautifully in the enterocyte, and we're ready for our final step of part one of lipid transport. These triglycerides are going to be packaged into chylomicrons. So we've finally reached the point of chylomicron formation. So this is part one. We started with dietary fat. It was attempted to be broken down by salivary lipase. It was somewhat broken down into free fatty acids, monoglycerides, and cholesterol. It went down the esophagus, through the stomach, into the small intestine. In the small intestine, these were organized into globules. The liver recognized this and said, hold on a second, I'm gonna release some bile salts to break these down and to really get that surface area going for future enzymes. So the bile salts acted on the globules and made them into surface optimized fat droplets. Pancreatic lipase was released by the pancreas. He came out with his boxing gloves on. He said, I'm gonna smash these fat droplets because I gotta break them down even further into full products such as the full array of free fatty acids, monoglycerides, and cholesterol. Once that pancreatic lipase smashed up the rest of what the salivary lipase couldn't do, then the free fatty acids, monoglycerides, and cholesterol organized themselves into micelles, which was just a solution that was colloidal in nature with these components in them. The micelles dumped the free fatty acids and monoglycerides into the enterocyte, so through the wall of the small intestine. And once those components went through the wall, they organized themselves into triglycerides. Once they were in triglycerides, the chylomicron was formed and the triglycerides entered the chylomicron. So that is part one of lipid transport. That's what you need to know so far. Let's just conclude part one by talking about the big picture. So the dietary fats were broken into their key lipids by lipase in the saliva and then the pancreas. These key lipids were shuttled from the opening of the digestive system, so from the mouth, to the small intestine, optimizing surface area as they go. Key lipids, including fat-soluble vitamins, cholesterol, and triglycerides, were ultimately packaged into chylomicrons, which are going to await further metabolism in the lipid transport biochemical pathway. So that concludes part one. Rewatch it if you need to understand how we got from the food, the, the fat in the food that you eat, to the packaging of the chylomicrons. But everything in the next video is going to build upon what we just talked about.